Hey bag maker, today I'm going to be talking about rivet cutting pliers, new fabrics and patterns that I've added to my stash. I'll be demonstrating how to make a double sided cotton strap and there's a great giveaway at the end. I'm Sarah Lawson from Sew Sweetness. Thanks so much for joining me for Social Sunday, my weekly sewing chat. Hey everybody, happy Sunday and welcome to Social Sunday. Thank you so much for joining me for the show. I have a lot of fun things to talk to you about today and of course the giveaway at the end. So you wanna make sure to watch throughout the show and then hang around for that giveaway at the end. Betty's watching from Omaha, Kathleen's watching from Wisconsin, Deb from Maryland, so welcome everyone. Um, a friendly reminder before I get started, just about everything that I talk about during Social Sunday are things that I've purchased myself. So these are not things that I'm getting paid to talk to you about, but just cool things that I found that I'd like to share with you. And everything that I'm scheduled to talk about, I link to in the description. So if you're interested in finding out more about any of the books, fabrics, notions, or projects that I talk about during Social Sunday, just check that link in the description and you can find out more information there. So um, Sheila emailed me the other week about rivet cutting pliers. So I recently did a demonstration on a rivet removal tool, which um, is a little bit of a different setup, but still a way to get your rivets out of your project in case you perhaps installed a rivet in the wrong spot, or maybe as you were installing it, the rivet went in cro crooked and it's not quite looking how it's supposed to look. So I'm going to demonstrate how to use these. And I should also mention on the package instructions, um, they do caution to wear protective eyewear. And I was playing around with the pliers before the show and like 100% you are going to wanna to wear some sort of protective eyewear because um, when you're using the pliers, those rivets just go shooting out as you're cutting them off. So I'm gonna put my goggles on. I borrowed these from William. <laughs> he uses these when he's playing Nerf guns with his friends. And uh, Danny, if you wouldn't mind uh, switching to the overhead view, I know you're enjoying uh, getting me on camera with those uh, attractive goggles, but this is what the packaging looks like. And uh, these are the pliers. So first off, they have a, sort of a, a safety switch over here in the back. So if you close them and you um, push down on that little switch, then they stay closed for when you're storing them so that you're not accidentally um, pinching yourself or cutting yourself. We're gonna go ahead and deactivate these. Um, let me see if I can hold them up. So they're they're flat on one side. This is the side that's going to go against um, the fabric and closest to the rivet. And then this sort of dips down in the center. And I installed a few rivets just to practice. Um, if possible, you'll want to remove the rivets on the wrong side of the fabric. Um, I tried it both ways on the right side where fabric was attached and on the wrong side, and it's definitely easier on the wrong side. So you don't have to worry so much about snipping into your fabric because that's a possibility. Um, even though this is oriented to be flush against the fabric, um, if you do need to remove the rivet on the right side of the fabric, you want to be extra cautious to kind of push that fabric down out of the way and make sure it's clear of the pliers before you cut. Um, I suggest making a little test swatch like this if you do decide to pick up these pliers and just practice pulling some pliers off or cutting them off rather. And um, again, for sure you wanna wear um, goggles. I was wearing glasses this morning and um, one kind of grazed the side of my lens. So um, even if you are wearing glasses, put something else um, additionally Can on top of that. Squeeze it with just one hand? Uh, yes, why? You put your left hand above it, then it'll protect it from shooting out. Like this? Yep. Oh, okay. Danny's suggesting to, you can also put your hand down on, on top of it, but, um, I mean, it really, it really shoots out. So, uh, again, I'm going to, um, have put your hand over the it. pliers. Well, then they can't see what, uh, what's going on. I'll you try it. The shit in the camera. Oh, the camera. Okay. Good call on that, Danny. All right. Okay. It was really easy to um, sort of snip this off and the packaging also does mention it requires 60% less effort um, to operate it as, as opposed to just, I guess, suppose regular pliers and I'll snip one off again. I'm gonna go ahead and put my hand over it so it's not gonna shoot up toward the camera and there you go. Yeah, super easy, um, would work either left-handed or right-handed. 
And um, again, these are the rivet cutting pliers. I got these from Tandy Leather and the link is in the description in case you'd like to check those pliers out. Uh, let me put these to the side. <laughs> I have a question for you. Let me know in the comments. Um, what was your biggest mess up? Oh, my hair's all sticking up now. What was your biggest mess, mess up while sewing? Um, let me know. Perhaps you cut wrong sizes of fabric. Um, my biggest mess up was probably um, in the early days of sewing as an adult. I was um, making a blouse and it had a facing, uh, which is supposed to be on the inside, basically not showing. And I sewed it and I couldn't understand what was going on, but I sewed it as sort of a, the facing ended up on the right side of the fabric somehow and it looked more of like a decorative placket. So I sort of, basically the beginnings of that garment went in my uh, scrap bin. I never finished it, but um, things happen sometimes, especially cutting out things to the wrong size, which I do all the time. Um, I also wanted to um, thank everyone that participated in the Chickadee Backpack Sew Along and um, entered their finished photos in um, the entry page on my blog. Um, Danny's going to post a screenshot view of the entries. These were all the entries that were posted on the blog. And I've also linked to this page in the description in case you're interested in checking it out after the show. And I've also linked to um, the Chickadee Backpack uh, subject line in our Facebook group because, of course, some more backpacks were completed after the deadline. And I've really enjoyed looking at all the completed backpacks. Um, we're going to post pictures of some of the backpacks. Unfortunately, we can't post them all. I really wanted to, but um, there were just so many finished completed backpacks. So, um, these are just some quick snapshots of some of the finishes. Again, I apologize if I did not post them all. And I was really impressed at the large selection of different styles of fabrics that were used, um, and different modifications that were made to the backpack, such as quilting, adding extra zipper pockets, um, adding an extra zipper pocket to the back was especially popular adding different pockets on the inside of the backpack or um, specific things for, I saw a lot of people were making these for um, baby shower gifts or for a new baby coming. And so <clears throat> some of the modifications were also to make this um, really fun as a diaper bag. So um, again, congratulations to everyone that submitted backpacks and um, it looked like from reading some of the comments in the Facebook group, it looked like this backpack for some was their most intricate sew to date as far as bag making. So I was really proud of those entrants when I read comments like those because uh, it, it just shows that the pattern, especially with the video, makes it um, accessible for all skill levels. And so um, I think that's really exciting because definitely looking at um, the backpack, it's, um, I don't know, a really, I thought, I, I was really happy with the design and um, yeah, just, I hope you enjoy looking at all these pictures. <clears throat> um, some other um, uses for the backpack that I wanted to mention, um, someone made the backpack for their picnic supplies. Um, dog training items like brushes, grooming tools. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's great for a lot of uses. So I wanted to announce the prize winner. So I did two randomly drawn prizes and then myself, Danny, William, and Violet, we each chose our favorite, but um, I'm not designating that on the show. So maybe uh, I'll just let you guess um, who chose which backpack. Um, so we're going to put those pic six pictures up on the screen right now. Debbie made this one with these really adorable gnomes. Um, Angela made this really pretty teal blue backpack. Um, Linda made this one with black vinyl with the quilted front pocket and the rainbow zippers. Linda made this um, with the blue solid front pocket. Tracy made this backpack with uh, the planet themed fabric and the last one 
Um, I didn't have a name entered for this one, but um, this that last one was number 104 in our list. So I will be emailing those six winners after the show with their prizes. But um, listen, congratulations to everyone that entered because um, that was a, a really detailed sew and all the backpacks turned out great. All right, some new fabrics that I've added to my stash. I'm going to have Danny switch to the overhead camera so that I can share some of these fabrics that I've purchased recently. <clears throat> I'll save this one till the end. Those are kind of big. So I purchased from Martha Negley's new fabric line, Trees. I didn't purchase every fabric from the line, but just the ones that caught my eye. <clears throat> I really like this one. It's sort of clearly made me think of uh, a tree one rolls. tree trunk. <laughs> this one's got some figs on it and <clears throat> a few of these I picked up in half yard pieces and then some of them one yard pieces. I'm not really sure what I'll make with them, but I thought they were really interesting designs on the fabrics. And then this next fabric line, I actually used this last week for a bag, so I've got little remnant pieces. But this stripe pairs super awesome with this, this main print. And then this one I used for the lining for this particular bag. And then I'm actually going to have Danny switch to the front camera because these three next fabrics are quite large, so maybe I can stand up and hold them up. So I saw Shannon use these recently for a bag. These are actually, these fabrics are made by a sling company called OSHA Slings and they also sell um, fabric by the meter. So these are woven prints. Uh, let's see if I can hold that up. And then I, I, it's sort of double-sided, so I'll, I'll show you the back side too. So these are a little bit thicker than quilting cotton, but I think still doable on most home sewing machines. This next one that I picked up is sort of a, it's not exactly a gold detailing, but it looks kind of yellowish to me, so. And then it's, uh, I'm, I'm not sure how different it is from the back, but I'll flip it to the back anyway. And then one more that I picked up. I'm not sure what types of bags that I'll use these for, but I just thought they were really cool. And then the other side looks like this. Okay, so I've linked to all of these fabrics in the description in case you're interested in checking out more. And like I mentioned, the third set of fabrics were um, more of a tapestry weight um, fabric and uh, really nice, but um, just so you know that they're different than the, the quilting cottons that um, I shared at the beginning of the set. So if you celebrate Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving is coming up this Thursday and I'm making a couple dishes um, I'm really excited about. I don't know why um, this one lasagna dis dish in particular is one of my favorites, but I only really have it once a year. So Danny's going to put a couple pictures up on the screen. I'm making this um, chocolate cream pie. I've made it before. It's delicious. And this is the butternut squash lasagna. I super love it. I've linked to both of those recipes in the description. Um, between my mom and myself, we've been making that butternut squash lasagna for years and it's amazing. I love it so much. And um, I hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving if you're celebrating this week. And um, we will be back um, next Sunday for Social Sunday on November 28th. So um, yep, uh, you can round out your holiday weekend with Social Sunday. Um, I have another question for you. Let me know in the comments. What is your favorite season? So we're coming up to winter here in the United States. Um, I have to say I do love summer. It does get really hot sometimes uh, here in Chicago, but I feel like the, the line between spring and summer, that's my favorite when it's just the right temperature, like 75 degrees, 70 degrees, maybe the sun, the sun's out all the time. And, um, Winter's okay, but I'm already thinking toward uh, next spring, certainly. Um, new, instead of the book review this week, I've added a few new um, sewing and quilt patterns to my stash. So Danny's going to switch back to the overhead camera. This first one's called Sparrows, and I'm super into birds. Um, I'm trying to decide what fabric colors that I'll use for my quilts. These fabrics are cool, but 
Um, I just don't know. Um, yeah, uh, I really like it a lot. Um, the finished quilt measures uh, 65 by 71 inches. And these next two quilts are from a new to me pattern company called Artie's Quilting Company. I really like the geometric design and the overlapping of the colors in this one. And this one is um, being a rainbow quilt. Uh, this one, of course, caught my eye immediately. And then this one is not a quilt pattern, but a sewing pattern. Funky Friends, Friends Factory makes a lot of stuffed animal sewing patterns. And this one came out recently for a chameleon. And so, uh, of course, I had to pick this one up and add it to my stash of uh, stuffed animal patterns. I, I really need to make one of them one of these days. So maybe I'll start off with the chameleon. Um, but all of the links to those patterns are in the description. So if you're interested in checking out um, more of any of those products and Danny's favorite part of the Sunday show when he's not on it, at least, we'd like to invite all of the bag makers to stand proud. Let us know in the comments that you're part of the So Sweetness squad. And um, Danny and I are so appreciative that you you've turned in tuned into Social Sunday today. Um, thank you so much for making time out of your day to watch our show. So my demonstration for today is for, I've done a demonstration in the past for making a double-sided strap with either cork, vinyl, or leather, um, sometimes in combination with quilting cotton. Um, but today I wanted to demonstrate how to make a double-sided strap when you're only using quilting cotton, such as what I've done here for this um, cavalcade travel bag. I made one side in red fabric and the other side in navy fabric. So it's really quick and easy to do this. And Danny's going to switch to the overhead camera so that I can show you how. Okay, so I'm demonstrating this method for a one inch finished strap. So if you're making a different width of finished strap, all you'll need to do is take the finished um, strap width as far as the piece that the pattern tells you to cut and divide it by two, and then you'll be adding the seam allowance. So the seam allowance here will be a quarter of an inch. So for my two pieces, I'm going to cut them two inches and a quarter each. And I'm using a solid fabric. You can use a print as well. So you'll just need these two pieces. Obviously, you'll want a long piece, the length of um, the strap or handle that you're using for whatever pattern. For my demonstration, I just have these, these shorter pieces. So you have these two pieces and you're first going to sew them right sides together using a quarter of an inch seam allowance because that's the seam allowance that we added. So here I've got my piece and I've stitched it using a quarter of an inch seam allowance and then you're going to press the seam open just like this. And then you'll want to cut a piece of shape flex that's the same width uh, as your piece. So I've got my shape flex piece cut right here. and. I'm going to lay the bumpy side with the adhesive against the wrong side of the fabric and you'll just fuse it in place and make sure that that seam stays pressed open as you're fusing that shape flex on top of it. After the interfacing is applied, let me take my wonder clips off, you'll be pressing like double fold bias tape. So we're going to be pressing first wrong sides together in half. And I found it helpful when I was at the ironing board to sort of take my fingers and roll out that seam so that the seam is right in the middle and you have equal amounts of fabric on either side. After that, you'll open the fabric out, press the lower edge up toward the center crease. Same thing with the top edge. And then you'll refold and press one more time. So this is what it will look like on either side. And then all that's left is to top stitch it. So I top stitched using an eighth of an inch seam allowance and then my strap is ready to use in my bag. So super easy, um, a nice way to give a little bit of extra visual interest to your straps or handles. And I think uh, I really like the look because there's a little bit of red in the fabric and because I use the red on the back side of the double sided straps. You can sort of, it sort of picks it up when you're carrying the bag, just a little bit of red coming through. So um, I really liked that effect. Um, and um, let me know if you try that out in the future. I think it's really quick and easy and um, um, it's really great with solids or prints. So um, I'm going to be answering some questions live in just a minute. So if you have a question for me, let me know in the comments. It can be, the, be either a general sewing question bag making question, question about a notion or tool, type your question in the comments right now on either Facebook or YouTube, wherever you're watching our show and 
Danny will be on the lookout for some questions that he can post for me. Before we get over to the questions, I wanted to announce the winner of last week's giveaway. <coughs> and that winner is Cynthia Dushik. So congratulations to you, Cynthia. Please email me after the show so I can get you set up with your prize. And again, congratulations to you. And there's another giveaway at the end of the show. All right, um, Kyla says, what is the name of the fabric on your bag you showed for the demo? So, uh, I don't remember the designer, but I picked this up from Spoonflower and I actually bought a lot of yards because I wanted to make sort of like a travel set with um, little pouches and extra accessories. This is the only one I've made so far. Feel free to email me after the show and I can get you the link for the designer. Again, that one was from Spoonflower. Mary Jo says, any suggestions for making two-sided straps when using vinyl and faux leather, especially trying to keep the seam allowance even? So I've linked to in the description um, my first video for the double-sided straps. This one's for either vinyl, cork, or leather. Um, you can either use um, both sides vinyl or cork, one side vinyl, one side quilting cotton. Um, that video is in the description. And um, Mary Jo's also asking, um, trying to keep the seam allowance even. I'm not sure if you mean the seam allowance for the top stitching or not. Um, there's a few options for marking the seam allowance. Um, I have, if you've seen some of my videos before, I do have a, a little bit of pink washi tape on there for half inch seam allowance since that's not marked on my machine bed. A magnetic seam guide also works and I've also seen um, I had these in the past and when we moved, I don't know what happened to them, but I had these little um, vinyl or rubber strips in bright colors that kind of uh, temporarily stick to the bed of your machine. So there's a few options as far as um, getting the correct seam allowance. Joan says, have you ever applied OD coat to a finished bag? I have not. I, I feel like I'd be a little bit hesitant to apply the OD coat when the bag's all done as opposed to when just the fabric pieces are flat, just because uh, when I applied it in the past, um, after the OD coat dried, it kind of, the fabric wasn't flat anymore. It kind of crinkled and it was just wavy looking. And so that's why it's good to apply it when uh, the fabric is just flat. And I also recommend cutting it um, slightly larger than the piece that you need just to account for any possible shrinkage. Um, but if you have applied OD coat to a bag that was completely finished, let us know in the comments and Danny will look out for that. Hopefully we can post it on the screen. Diane says, I'm working on the Ansel camera bag as a Christmas gift for my nephew. It is turning out lovely. Thank you for such a wonderful pattern. Thank you so much, Diane. I'm so happy that uh, you found one of my patterns to make for a Christmas gift. I think there's lots of possibilities as far as um, making sewn items. Um, you know, there's not just bags. Um, like you mentioned, the Ansel camera bag, um, DOP or cosmetic bags, um, maybe a shaving kit, something like that. So lots of different options out there. Pam says, I purchased the iron-on vinyl. Do I need to use a particular needle or foot from Sydney? So first off, you'll want to use either a Teflon foot or a walking foot um, because the vinyl the regular presser foot kind of wants to stick to the vinyl which will result in really tiny stitches very close together and so the teflon foot or the walking foot will help prevent that and i usually use my regular needle for sewing with vinyl i use a 9014 microtex needle and uh, i usually use either the organ brand or the schmetz brand of needle tara says are you making any christmas gifts this year so i'm making I'm making a couple. I guess we'll see how it goes as far as time. Um, I certainly don't want to be up against the wire. So I have a few things planned. Uh, whatever I do happen to finish before Christmas, I'll, I'll share it with you on the live show. Kay says, I have done OD coat to a completed bag. It's a little difficult, but it worked. Thank you so much, Kay, for that feedback about the OD coat. Melissa also says, I have applied the OD coat to a bag after use. I used a paintbrush. It worked okay. Had to be careful of my hardware. Good tip about the hardware, Melissa. Um, Kathleen says, what is a good serger for home? So my very first serger was a brother brand of serger. It was <clears throat> um, 1034D was the model number of the brother serger. I think at the time I maybe got it. Hmm, 
maybe 15 or so years ago at the time I think it was around $150 I'm not sure what the pricing would be now um, I currently have a Juki serger but um, that brother serger was was great for so many years Wendy says can a laptop fit in the chickadee backpack so it probably depends on the size of your laptop however um, I did see in the Facebook group a bunch of people did make a slip pocket for a laptop for their backpacks. I, I know I saw maybe one or two people make their backpacks taller just because they had a larger style of laptop, but um, definitely doable and it might fit as is depending, again, depending on the size. Beth says, Sarah, how do you store your printed patterns? So I actually have um, a, like a school three ring binder and I um, print the patterns out. Obviously, usually if there's pattern pieces, I'll print out um, a set to keep permanently and then I'll print out a second set um, to cut so I can use right then and there. Um, if you, your binder has um, pockets, um, perhaps you can save pattern pieces that way. And I have one of those, um, Danny, what's it called? Uh, it's like an office punch for cutting three holes so I can fit the papers in the binder. I'm sure there's a more appropriate name, but um, so yeah, that's basically what I do. And I use little um, tabs. You can use little tabs or post-its to keep um, the pattern separated. So for instance, at the beginning of the pattern, I have a tab and then the beginning of the next pattern, I have another tab. So when I'm flipping through, I don't have to flip through every single page. I can just sort of skip to the next pattern and you can even label those with the pattern name if you want. Um, Melissa says, where do you get your, where do you get your garment patterns? Um, actually one of my favorite uh, fabric shops, Hawthorne Supply Company, has a lot of garment patterns that they stock on their website. Um, other, other than that, I would shop at the individual designer's website. Um, being a pattern designer myself, sometimes uh, I usually like to uh, support other designers by purchasing from them directly, but like I mentioned, um, Hawthorne Supply Company is a great place for garment patterns as well as other patterns. Kathy says, is it advisable to use wax canvas as an interior of a cork bag? Um, that's a really great question. I haven't personally done that. I've only used wax canvas for the outside of a bag, um, but I'm going to throw it out to the viewers again. Let me know if you have made a bag with wax canvas for the lining. Trisha says, Sarah, to trim the batting in seams of bags, have you tried Trimmer by George? Actually, I've never heard of that, but I'm going to write myself a note so I can check that out after the show. Trimmer by George. Thanks for that recommendation. And Kelly says, Sarah, have you ever waxed your own canvas? I have not, but I've seen in the fabric shop before, <clears throat> like a little tin or kit to wax your own. So maybe I will write myself a note and maybe I can demonstrate that on a future episode of Social Sunday. Mary says three hole paper punch. Thank you so much, Mary. <laughs> Lori says, if you sew gifts for the holidays, etc., what is your favorite thing to make and give? So probably one of my favorites, um, so sweetness pattern to make for a gift. Um, is the Creative Maker Supply Case. It comes in three different sizes. Size large is really good for children because you can put a coloring book or a sketch pad in there as well as lots of colored pencils. I made Danny size medium to hold his Kindle and some charging cords. And there's an even smaller one. That one would be good for um, a wallet as well. Evelyn says, have you seen the book by Jenny Doan from Missouri Star Quilts? It's a very easy read and she opens up um, so you get to know her and her business. I did not know about that book, but I'll write myself a note for that as well. I'm assuming it's some sort of biography about her or maybe autobiography. Um, Anne says, what is the name of the bag to your left? Turquoise on the bottom and rainbow material on the top. This is the... Bella pouch I had to think about that for a minute <laughs> um, the top the top pushes down so whatever you have inside say if you have some colored pencils um, if you there's little tabbies on either side if you push this down then it sort of reveals everything that you've got inside and this is size large so there's two smaller sizes 
Anne says, um, what is washi tape or whatever you call the tape you put in your machine for a seam guide? So it's basically like painter's tape, but in different widths and different colors and designs. People use it for, I'm not a scrapbooker, but I'm assuming it's used for scrapbooking or decorating packages or decorating notebooks and other things. Um, I think the width I've got on my machine is probably maybe three quarters of an inch. So like I said, it comes in different widths. Violet has a lot of washi tape in her desk as well. <laughs> Karen says, what do you recommend for brand of thread if you are a beginner bag maker? So actually, uh, I think it was a couple weeks ago, I talked about the beginner bag makers toolkit and I've also got it's um, cut as a separate video on my YouTube channel. So I talk about the absolute essentials for bag making, including thread. I use uh, Orofil 40 weight thread for bag, ma bag making, but um, if you're interested in that video, just check out my YouTube channel. It should be one of the recent uploads as um, it was a recent video. And Dolores says, what type of thread do you use for top stitching for your bag? So I also use that Orofil 40 weight thread uh, for sewing the bag together as well as for top stitching. Wendy says, what is a good beginner bag to use Tula webbing besides a basic tote? So actually you can use, um, if you have the Starling bag pattern, you can use um, the Tula pink webbing for that if you'd like to. Um, I made one version of the Starling bag. I didn't use the Tula pink webbing because it wasn't out yet, but I did use seatbelt strapping, which is very similar to the Tula pink webbing. Um, yeah, actually I feel like that Tula pink webbing is the closest you can get to seatbelt strapping without actually officially being seatbelt strapping. It's super similar though. Um, we, we are sold out on that uh, webbing on our website, but we're expecting more in a few weeks. So we'll have it back in stock soon. Um, Anita says, I have your first book. If I pay shipping, will you autograph it and send it back? Actually, I do have, I'll have to look where they are. They're somewhere in this room. I actually have uh, blank book plates with a picture from the book. I got them from my publisher years ago. And if you'd like to email me, I can sign one of those book plates and send it to you in the mail. So my email is sarahetzosweetness.com and that's Sarah with no H. Retha says, I have lost my bag making sojo. What is a good bag pattern to possibly get it back? Um, trying to kickstart my memory. The Super Bloom Tote is a super popular one in the Facebook group and as far as make um, a pouch of persimmons it's so much fun Danny says the persimmon dumpling pouch is so much fun he actually made that one uh, what else what else the paladin pouch is pretty uh, pretty interesting so it's got the three separate sections on the inside in case you need a gift for the holidays Michelle says I'm sewing a circular circular opening with cork fabric to side pocket on the chickadee bag um, I'm thinking of zigzagging the opening. Any thoughts? Um, oh, okay. So I'm assuming you're doing a circular opening like I've seen in the Facebook group. A few people made um, a wipes dispenser holder on the side pocket um, and they made a circular cutout for that. Let me think. That's a good question. I'm not sure about the zigzag. My initial thought is maybe to sew it right sides together with that circular opening with maybe a lighter fabric, maybe like a quilting cotton, just so you get a nice finish for the circular opening. And then maybe you can use binding to finish the top edge of the pocket since you'll need that top edge free for turning everything right side out. That's just my initial thoughts. Um, feel free to email me if you need some other ideas. Uh, again, uh, it's Sarah at SoSweetness.com. Kelly says wax canvas demonstration would be fabulous. Um, Don't we have one? I will, I think she was talking about how to wax your own canvas. Um, I, I will for sure try to pick something up and demonstrate on the show. I think that would be really interesting. Charlotte says, can you use the same strap technique on faux leather and cork? I'm planning to make key fobs. Yeah, so if you're using faux leather or cork, um, check my link in the description. I have a separate video um, demonstrating how to make that double-sided strap if you're using cork, vinyl, or leather. Mary says, what is your favorite pie to eat at Thanksgiving? Actually, 
I hate to be a downer, but pie's not generally the top of my list for desserts. I don't, mm, I do like a fruit crisp, which is, I guess, close to pie. If I had not to really. choose a pie, I would pick um, apple with like streusel on the top. Is that a pie? I'm not, I'm not even Aren't sure. Are you making a pie for Thanksgiving? Chocolate cream pie. I don't know if that's technically oh, a pie. pie. Yeah, I know, but it's more like a chocolate dessert. What's your favorite pie, Danny? French silk pie. French silk pie? Okay, okay. It's like a cheesecake factory style. Mm, mm -hmm. Terry says, have you ever made a Bargello bag pattern either on a quilt or a bag and Drunkard's Path pattern? I'm trying to decide on a quilt for me. I haven't made a quilt. Um, I'm probably pronouncing it incorrectly. The first one that you mentioned, I do super love a Drunkard's Path. I love uh, working with curves. Um, my friend Latifa Safir has uh, acrylic templates as well as quilt patterns for curves and Drunkard's Path style quilts. So if you're veering in that direction, check out her website. Again, her name is Latifa Safir. And if you just Google that, uh, her last name is spelled S-A-A-F-I-R. Um, her pattern company should come up. Quilting in Romania says, have you made a bag with wax canvas? If so, did you still use foam interfacing? I did use the same interfacing as called for in the pattern, but the wax canvas I have, it's by Robert Kaufman, it's called Waxer Canvas. It's a quite thin wax canvas. So that's why I use the same interfacing as called for in the pattern. If you're using a thicker weight of a wax canvas, I, I can't remember off the top of my head. I think the Robert Kaufman is either 2.8 or 8.9. I know that's a big range, but I just, one of those off the top of my head, I, I'm veering toward the 2.8. It, it's a quite thin wax canvas. Randy says, how long would you say the cavalcade bag would take? Ah, uh, that's a tough call. I'm usually not timing myself when I'm making a bag. Um, maybe seven or eight hours of sewing time. That would be my best guess. Um, if you have made the cavalcade bag and you have a better estimate of time, let me know in the comments. Danny will look out for that so he can post it on the screen. And Mary Lee says, what did you mean by sling fabric? Oh, that's a, that's a great question. So... These fabrics that I was showing earlier were designed to be made for baby slings. So baby slings are baby wraps. So like you carry the, for baby wearing basically. When Violet and William were little, I didn't use baby slings, but I used a baby carrier where the baby is sort of strapped to your front. Um, I actually still have Violet's baby carrier. Um, I saved it for posterity, I guess. Vicki says, are you going to make a bag pattern using vinyl, leather, and cork fabric? Um, I have used elements of cork in some bags, and I have seen people make the bags in all cork. For example, one of my recent patterns, the Stingray bag, I've seen a few people make that bag in all cork for the exterior. So um, I guess it depends on the pattern, but a lot of them can be adapted for those substrates instead of quilting cotton. I just like using quilting cotton because um, when I'm making my first version of the bag, I'm making it for the pattern step photos. And so um, while I'm doing that, I'm sort of correcting my pattern instructions and sometimes I need to rip seams out and change how the pattern pieces are shaped. And because of all that, um, I usually don't want to use cork leather or vinyl because I don't want to be ripping and making holes with the needle through those fabrics and then when I'm making the video I like also using quilting cotton just because I like to see it in a different print than the first one I made so uh, Joan says I used cork and did a lot of basting on my cavalcade it took me about 15 hours um, Kimberly says the cavalcade bag took me two days to cut out and prep and eight hours to sew Thank you for um, those estimates for the cavalcade bag. I think Danny's calling on the question, so I apologize if I did not get to your questions live, but I'll be back again next Sunday. Actually, next Sunday is my birthday, so it'll be my, my birthday show next Sunday for Social Sunday. So one last thing to get to, and that's the giveaway for tonight. Um, the giveaway is randomly drawn, and you have until the end of the day this Saturday to leave any comments on tonight's show either on Facebook or YouTube we compile all the comments together and then randomly draw a winner um, so I'll give you let me show you the prize first it's a, a huge big bag of zipper by the yard 
Um, this is, I think it's mostly, it's mostly number five zipper tape, but I, I do see a few pieces of the number three zipper tape inside the bag. Um, so that's one winner and um, an extra question for you that you can answer in the comments. What's your favorite holiday dish? So I mentioned earlier two of my most favorite holiday dishes. Let me know in the comments and maybe I'll try to go on the computer after the show and see if I can Google some of these favorite holiday dishes. Um, thank you so much for watching Social Sunday. I hope you have a great week and happy sewing. Bye everybody. Thank you.